In this video, we're going to look at every single feature of Excel VBA. Excel VBA is a programming language which is primarily used to create Windows-based applications that interact with Microsoft Excel. VBA code is written using the built-in editor, and we enter the editor by going to the Developer tab and clicking on the Visual Basic button. We can also flip between the editor and Excel by using the Alt plus F11 shortcut key. In VBA, we use procedures to hold our code and they in turn are stored in modules. We have two types of procedures, subs and functions. The main difference is that functions can return a value, whereas subs cannot. To run a procedure from the editor, we click in the sub and select run, run sub from the menu. The shortcut key is F5. To place a value in a cell, we assign the value to a range like this. This will write the value 99 to cell A1. If we don't specify the worksheet before range, then it refers to whichever worksheet is currently active. It is equivalent to this code. Most of the time using the active worksheet isn't a good idea, so we specify the worksheet instead. We can use this workbook dot worksheets and the name of the worksheet, or we can use the code name of the worksheet instead. The code name is the name on the left in the project window. We can copy values between cells like this. In this case, we are copying the value from C1 to A1. We can copy between cells on different worksheets in the same way. We simply need to specify the worksheets and cells we wish to use. We can also copy multiple cells using this method, but make sure that both ranges are the same size or you will get either errors or missing data. Cells is an alternative to the range property. It takes the number of the row and the number of the column as arguments and returns a range of one cell. Cells is useful when we want to use a number rather than the letter for the column. We can also combine cells with the range function to give us a range of cells. When we are referring to objects multiple times, we can use the width statement to simplify our code. And then we can remove the object from this section of the code and VBA will still understand what we mean. We must end the width section with an end width statement. We use the dim statement in VBA to declare variables. These are examples of basic variables which hold one value only. We assign a value to these variables like this. We also use variables for Excel objects. When assigning any object variable, we must always use the set keyword. When dealing with basic types, we can actually use the let keyword. However, the let keyword is optional, so no one really uses it. In more advanced terms, the let statement copies the value and the set statement copies the address of the variables. With non-Excel objects like the collection or like class modules, we need to create the actual object that we're going to use. We use the new keyword to do this. Using dim like this will always create exactly one object. If we wish to create multiple objects, then we would use new in the set statement. This gives us flexibility and we can put the set statement in a loop to generate multiple objects. There is a special variable type called a variant. A variant allows VBA to decide the data type at runtime. However, it can hide errors and slow down performance, so it's best to avoid using variants unless absolutely necessary. Now, a good example of using a variable when it is necessary is when copying a range into an array. When we don't declare a variable, then it is automatically a variant. As this is poor practice, we should make declaring variables mandatory by placing option explicit at the top of our modules. And we can set this to happen automatically by going to tools options and placing a check in the require variable declaration checkbox. In VBA, an if statement follows this structure. The if and then keywords surround the condition you're evaluating. If the condition is true, the code within the block will execute. The statement concludes with end if to indicate the end of the conditional block. In VBA, we can use select case as an alternative to if statements. The advantage being that it makes the code more readable. In VBA, we have two main types of for loops. Number one, we have the standard for loop. The standard for loop is ideal when you need a counter and precise control over the loop's order. The second for loop in VBA is the for each loop. And this is specifically designed for iterating over data structures like arrays, collections, or dictionaries. The advantage of the for each loop 
is that it's cleaner to write and significantly faster for structures like collections. In VBA we also have the while when loop and the do while loop. These differ to the for loops in that we do not know in advance how many times they will run. For example, this loop will end when the user types the letter Q. It could run once or it could run a hundred times. The do while loop was supposed to be a replacement for the while when loop, but you can use whichever you prefer. The difference is that do while can have the conditions at the start or end of the loop. We can also use until instead of while and this inverts the condition. We can declare an array in VBA like this. However, as this makes the array inflexible, it is better to use the readim statement to set the size. The advantage is that readim can take a variable, meaning we can set the size dynamically. We can read to an array using the standard for loop. We use the built-in lbound and ubound functions to give us the first and last positions of the array. We can also use the for each loop with the array. Arrays do not come with many built-in functions, so for most standard tasks we need to write our own. The most common use of arrays is with range. We can load a range of data into an array or write it back to the worksheet in a single line of code. Using arrays makes our code run very fast. Arrays are compatible with many worksheet functions such as SUM or the new Excel sort function. Collections are the other built-in data structures in VBA. We retrieve items from a collection by specifying the position. However, items in a collection are read-only, which limits the functionality of collections. The main difference between collections and the array is that you don't need to set the size of the collection and it is easy to perform insertion or removal operations on a collection. The dictionary is used a lot in VBA. It is actually part of an external library, so we need to reference the Microsoft Scripting Runtime library to use it. A dictionary is a key value pair similar to a real-world dictionary. We can retrieve values from the dictionary like this. And we can easily reach a dictionary using the for loop. The dictionary has many useful applications in VBA and we tend to use it a lot more than the collection. We use the debug print statement in VBA to write to the immediate window. And this is useful for testing our output before we actually write it to a worksheet. The debug assert statement Pause the code if the condition evaluates to false. This is really useful for detecting when a variable has an invalid value. Assertions are really useful for finding errors in your code, but should only be used during development. Enumerators are used to represent numbers with readable text. For example, when we're using paste special, we could use numbers like this, but our code is not that readable. Now if we add enums, it makes it easy to understand the code. We can create enums like this and we can then use them anywhere in our code. We can use custom types like this in our code to store multiple variables. This is useful when dealing with something like customer records. They are not as flexible as class modules, but they are useful in certain situations. We can create custom objects using class modules. They are limited compared to classes in many other languages. We add a class module by right-clicking in the project window and selecting Insert and Class Module. We can then add variables and our procedures. To use a class module, we must create it as an object using the new keyword. Using class modules allows us to store multiple values in one position in a data structure. We can use a limited version of interfaces with class modules using the implements keyword. VBA has a very rich environment for creating Windows GUIs. If we right click on any project and select insert and then user forms, we can create a new form. Once the form is created, we can easily add standard controls such as drop-downs, buttons and text boxes. Although these controls might appear a bit dated, we can customise their colours and settings to give them a more modern look. The true power of user forms lies in their ability to be configured using WIT events, enabling us to create advanced tools like this one. In VBA, error handling is done using the onError goto statement. To ensure it works, you must have break on unhandled errors checked. When an error occurs, the code jumps to the label specified in the onerror statement. We can use onerror resume next to skip errors. While this is a poor practice, there are times in VBA when it can be useful. If we want to throw our own custom error, then we can use the error raise function like this. We use the message box in VBA to display messages to the user. 
It is highly configurable and we can also use it to get a response. The input box in VBA allows us to get more detailed responses from the user. For example, here we can retrieve a string. We can return multiple data types, including ranges. We can use the getOpenFileName function to give us access to the Windows file dialog. This allows the user to select one or more files. If you found this video useful, then make sure to check out my video on 25 newbie VBA habits you need to ditch right now.